higher maths, uh, straight line section, lesson number five. So far we have looked at gradients in lesson one and two, then collinear points in lesson three. And in lesson four, we looked at perpendicular gradients. And for perpendicular gradients, uh, the gradient of one times the perpendicular gradient is equal to negative one. So here we're going to have a look at y equals mx plus c and just kind of apply the perpendicular gradient knowledge that we now have to solve this problem here. So going back to national five, if the equation line is in the form y equals mx plus c, c is the y-intercept, the point where the line crosses the y-axis, and m is the gradient. Uh, the y and the x, that's just the y-coordinate and the x-coordinate. So if we kind of quickly draw a line, there we are. Uh, let's just put that on there. So looking here, so the y-coordinate at any point would be equal to the gradient. So for example, the gradient might be minus 2 times the x-coordinate add on C. So we'll, we'll do this bit and have a little bit more of a chat about that. So example one, write the equation of the line which is perpendicular to 2y plus 3x equals 6 and passes through 0, negative 2. So let's have a look at this. Let's get it into this format. Then we'll be able to find the gradient and the y-intercept first of all. So we need to subtract 3x from both sides here. So we will end up with 2y equals negative 3x plus 6. We want y equals mx plus c. We've got 2y, so we're going to divide every single term by 2. So y equals negative 3 over 2x plus 3. So if we are looking at this, that would be 3 y intercept would be 3, and the gradient would be negative 3 over 2. So again, linking together, so the y coordinate anywhere on this line, so for example up here, say when x was negative 2, the y coordinate would be negative 3 over 2 times the x coordinate, which we just said might be x equals negative 2 here. So multiply those together, we'll get positive 3, add on another 3, we'll get a y coordinate of 6. So when x is negative 2, y is 6, if we wanted to know that. We're looking for the equation of the line that's perpendicular that, to that that passes through 0, negative 2. Well, 0, negative 2 is there, round about there. And if we draw on a line that is perpendicular, which means at right angles to this line, that'll be about here. That looks like a, about a right angle. So let's just draw on that right angle. So really, I'm just trying to explain what you're actually working out here, rather than just telling you the process so you can sort of blindly follow it. Let's let's try and think about what we're doing. So we've got the equation of this line here. So looking at it, the gradient's negative 3 over 2, so it's heading downwards as we move left to right, plus 3, which means it crosses at 3. We want the equation of a line perpendicular to this, so at right angles to this, that passes through 0, negative 2. So there we are, there's a perpendicular gradient. So what two bits of information do I need? I need the gradient and the y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept's negative 2. I know the gradient of this line is negative 3 over 2, so to find the perpendicular gradient, just like in lesson 4, we flip this, change a sign, the gradient would be 2 thirds. Now we can just very simply substitute into y equals mx plus c, we'll have y equals 2 thirds x subtract 2. And there's the equation of that line. Example 2, just following on from, oh no, it's not, it's a different one. So example 2, state whether or not the point 2, 1 lies on the line y equals 3x plus 5. So again, y is the y-coordinate, x is the x-coordinate. These things balance up. The y-coordinate is equal to 3 times the x-coordinate plus 5. So this is linking together the points on a straight line. 
if I substitute in 2, 1, it's got 2 is the x coordinate, 1 is the y coordinate. If it lies on the line, it will balance up. If it doesn't lie on the line, you will get some two numbers that are not equal to each other. So let's substitute in. So substitute in 2, 1. So x is 2, y is 1 becomes 1 for the y. And substitute in x, 1 equals 3, 2, z, 5. Clearly, 1 is not the same as 3, 2, z, 5. So as 1 is not equal to 3, 2, z, 5, the point 2, 1 does not lie on the line. And if you've got values that are equal, so if you had 7 equals 7 or 10 equals 10, then that point would lie on the line. And that is the y equals mx plus c lesson. So have a go at page 8, 1e, questions 1, 2, 7 and 8 from your Heinemann textbook.